What's up guys, my name's Portal Crusher, and welcome back to another episode of If My Heart Had Wings. In the last episode, we did our first day of school, met our friend Agaha, and we also met the only other male character that I've seen in this visual novel thus far, and that was Mabau. So now we're going to continue things off with After School. I was alone and wandering around the school building. This was so that I could take a a look at some of the club activities. Film studies, theater club, there's even an RC club. This is, after all, a specialist school. Looking at the playing field from the window in the heat outside, I saw the sports club practicing. Compared to my school, it's pretty calm. The sports club at the school I used to go to were taken so seriously. The sight of training before a match was one of the... was one of grueling harshness. Wait, what do you mean, my school? I'm a student of this school now. I'll go take a look. So, okay, so I guess he was talking to himself. I went down next to the playing field to watch the sports club practicing. Before long, I started to feel a little down, so I left. That's right, this guy's got some sort of physical disability. The doctor said that if it's light exercise, it shouldn't be a problem. I try stamping down strongly with my right foot, and there isn't really any discomfort. There, the baseball club, which was returning through from the off-campus running course, entered through the school gates. Hey, Minase! It's you, Minase, isn't it? The one calling me was an old acquaintance. It's you, Taguchi. It's been a long time. So you came back? Have you decided which club you want to join? No, not yet. I'm going around taking a look now. Join the baseball club. You'd become a regular in no time. When I was a kid, I often played baseball in the park. Some of the guys in the group that were my teammates are on the other team were in the baseball team. I'll think about it. I casually responded, and the baseball team members replied, Come on, join us, seriously, as they returned to the playing field. If I could do physical activities, baseball, in fact anything, would be okay. As I grumbled to myself, I felt that I didn't want to go back to the playing field, so I entered the path leading to the back of the school. I spend a while walking around the back of the school. Wow, okay. <laughs> Whatever, dude. It was called the rear garden, but it looked like it hadn't been taken care of at all, and was just an empty space with weeds growing everywhere. In that empty space, there was a garage. Hello, I'm coming in, I say to nobody. It looks like no one's here, <laughs> see? But I thought I should say something to let them know, just in case, because you never know what high schoolers might be doing in a garage, just saying. Is this place used for club activities too? Or is it used for lessons? I don't know what they're used for, but there are many tools and parts crammed onto the shelves that cover the walls. I see you over there, tail of a glider. You can't hide from me. Then in the uh-huh. Then in the center is a huge object covered with a sheet. Hmm. The feeling that had washed over me like a wave when I was watched the sports clubs strangely subsided. Wait. Strangely subside from being here. Oh, the feelings subs. Okay. Feelings subside. It's all good. The tools in the dimly lit garage must must have reminded me of the times when I would tinker with my bicycle. What's this used for? I can seal the sound of my footsteps as I sneak inside the garage for no reason. It's pretty spacious. There's a tea set here, too. There's no doubt about it. Someone was using this place. I get a strange sense of activity. I guess it must be one of the clubs. Whoa! Whoa, that's a question. Oh. Th th there's someone here! Oh. I guess did I just text on save? I was so surprised, it felt like my heart was going to jump out. Hmm. The person over there seemed not to have noticed me at all. I'm not sure if you could call it a drawing board, but as she stared at the plants that were placed there, she was kind of groaning. Um... Hmm. I'm sorry for letting myself in here. I'll be going now. Hmm. Okay, she's obviously either deaf or just straight up ignoring you. If it's the second option, then she's smart. 
It's no good, she didn't hear me. Her eyes were so serious as she stared at the plans, and she looked like she was really concentrating. I didn't know what to do, so I just looked at her from the side, like a creepster. Now that I look closely, she's really beautiful. Yep, here he goes. Here he goes again. He's just gotta... That's where it goes every time. Hey, why am I staring at her? This is some life-changing inner monologue that he's having. I hurriedly looked away. But it didn't matter, because she didn't see me anyway. However, it looks as if she still hadn't noticed me. Duh. So I took another glimpse, because... Jokes, I wasn't actually remorseful. She looks quite mature. Is she in the fifth grade? She's so pretty. So pretty. Katori is pretty too, but this person is different and has a mysterious charm. Maybe she's got some alul too. Hmm. I, I love how it's mysterious beauty now. As if this character is just like mentally cataloged this person as such. Whoosh! She suddenly stood up. I, I, I'm sorry. Without thinking, I avert my eyes and apologize. But she's looking straight past me and grabs a big, thick book from the shelf. Yes, that's it. She flicked through the pages and looked like she had found something before going straight back to her seat. <laughs> Aha! In good spirits, she began swiftly drawing the plans. The pen made a nice swoosh swoosh sound as it ran across the page. The feeling of maturity that she had until just now suddenly changed. When she smiles all of a sudden, she looks more like a kid. As her eyes looked straight at the plans, they looked as though they were had a crystal clear purity to them. Actually, I don't know how you're telling that, because her eyes are closed. Just like an innocent child, her eyes looked as though she believed that the world is full of wonderful, sparkling things. Ha <laughs> ha there we go. Her hand stopped moving. I got the timing right. What? Excuse me. Hmm? She finally noticed me. Oh, hello. Even though I had unexpectedly appeared like that, she didn't show any signs of caution, and still in good spirits, smiled as she greeted me. This girl doesn't know what she's getting herself into. Hi. I thought that I should say something to her, but I didn't think of what to say after that. What's up? I'm sorry that I just let myself in here. I just transferred here today, but I was taking a look at the club activities, and I got lost and came in here. I got a little carried away and said more than I needed to, but she didn't seem interested in all. She looked at me as if to say, yes, and, I don't mind if you let yourself in here. It seemed like a kind of blunt way to say it, but she wasn't angry or anything. She has a strange way of speaking. Well, I'm sorry, I'd better go. Hmm. As I said that, like a total loser. <laughs> a huge sound echoed through the garage. Well, at least he's self-aware that he's a loser. Well, what's that noise? Oh, I'm hungry. With a lack of energy in her voice, the beautiful girl before me held her stomach and fell down onto the drawing board. Was that the sound of your stomach just now? We're inside the garage, so the sound echoed like crazy and sounded like the growl of a monster. Hmm, looks like my body just remembered that my stomach is empty. She seemed to sway as she tried to get up, but she didn't have enough energy, so she slumped back down on her cheek on the drawing board. Would you like to eat this? I took some bread out of my bag, because I randomly have bread in my bag. I thought I'd get hungry with just a lunchbox, so at lunchtime I brought some melon bread. Wow. Her eyes shone as if she were an explorer who had discovered treasures in a cave in some unexplored place. Uh, are you sure? Go ahead. Thank you. She took the melon bread, opened the wrapper immediately, and bit into the contents. She was getting crumbs everywhere, but really looked like she was enjoying it as she devoured it greedily. It's so tasty. I haven't had any calorie intake in ages. 
Could that be because she's poor? Wow, jeez. Johnny on the spot to judge people. Mm, just based on first impressions alone. The fact that she was so ecstatic over something like melon bread actually made me quite worried. She didn't show any signs that she was thinking of my generosity, I just ate up the high calorie melon bread. I love how the adjectives he used to describe the melon bread were high calorie. Phew, that was delicious. She murmured happily, looking happy as can be. She looked like she was mulling over the taste of the melon bread in her brain. The sugar is going to my brain. <laughs> okay, this girl's starting to really creep me out. She said as she turned back to the drawing board. Bye, back to the drawing board. Lol. <laughs> then she started drawing the plans again with incredible energy. From the serious look on her face, it seemed that she had already forgotten about me. She is strange. Not just a little, but very strange. Okay, well, I'll be off now. And she ignores me. Perhaps she didn't hear me. Perhaps she chose to ignore you. I put the melon bread wrapper that she had left behind in my pocket and turned to leave. I reluctantly left the special atmosphere of the garage behind me. That was a short and very queer encounter. <laughs> Evening has fallen. Well then, maybe I should head back. By the time I had finished watching the various clubs, the sky was orange and the sun was setting. Oh, there you are! Hmm? Agatha was at the school gate. Agatha looks towards me and points to the cell phone she is holding at me. I thought if you were still here, we could leave together. I called you several times, but you didn't answer. I told Agaha I would take a look at the club activities before leaving. Can you look at the call history? Hmm? I left it at the dormitory. Huh? Why? That defeats the purpose of having a cell phone! She's right, dude. Doesn't it say in the school rules that you can't bring cell phones to school? Y yes that's true, but does anyone actually follow that rule? It's alright if you don't get caught, it seems. In my case, I'm not so worried about the school rules. It's just too bothersome to carry a cell phone around with me. I mean, it's so lightweight and compact, it fits right in your pocket, and it's useful when people need to get out with you. What a bother, right? <laughs> Even though I got your number, but it doesn't mean anything. Hmm? How do you know my number? Five years ago, when I left Kazagora, I was still just a kid, so I didn't have a cell phone. I got it from Anchan earlier. He gave me your text address too, so I could bombard you with text messages. <laughs> what? Don't bother, it's too much hassle. Writing texts on a cell phone is too fiddly, which is a real pain, so I don't really like it. Yeah, because apparently Japanese people have not invented anything past the flip phone. But it looks like Agatha isn't listening to me and has started walking on ahead. Okay, should we head back? Blue? How was your first day at your new school? Hmm, seems like an interesting school. It was different to the sports schools or regular schools and had a special kind of atmosphere. Everyone looks like they enjoy it and it's, how should I say, like they come here to hang out. <laughs> you could say that. Oh, wow, that was weird. Everyone comes here because they are things that they want to do. Things they want to do. Have you found a club you want to join? I don't know. There are a few that seemed interesting, though. Here, the sports clubs aren't that great, so you might find them kind of lacking. What do you do, Agaha? I'm in the robot club. We make robots and enter contests. Robots? That sounds interesting, too. You're always welcome, Aoi. Yeah, I'll think about it. Well then, I'm going this way. Huh? Isn't your place around here? Yeah, but I moved. Didn't you know that Kazumi Shopping Street is no longer there because of the reconstruction? No way, seriously? They've made a huge shopping mall. My family's shop has moved there too. I'll take you there when we have a day off. Okay, see you tomorrow. Uh, hey. What? Thanks for everything today. It's fine, it's fine. You just buy me a parfait next time, that'll be enough. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, that you're the same way towards me as is in the past. 
Ah, sure. That was a big help. Haha, <laughs> me too. Apart from your appearance, you haven't changed a bit. Ah, and your appearance isn't that bad either. Warning! Flirting alert! Flirting alert! This is leaking some secret information, but today a few girls asked me to give them your phone number. Seriously? Correction, you've got quite an eye for the ladies, haven't you, Aoi? So what? I didn't have that kind of thing at an all-boys school. Well, it proves that you're a normal, healthy boy. In the time since we last met, you've grown up. I don't like the way this is going. Agatha looked happy as she said that. So have you. To be honest, I thought she would have grown up to be a little more rough and tomboyish. <laughs> That's right. Hmm? Agatha started smiling quietly. Looking at that innocent smile reminded me of how Agatha was when we w she was still just a kid. Welcome back, Aoi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See you again tomorrow, old buddy. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> Ouch. She gave me a great big slap on the back. See ya! Agatha gave me a big wave and turned the corner. Ouch, you doofus. She might have gotten a little cuter, but she hadn't really changed on the inside. Welcome back, huh? Her attitude hasn't really changed since before, and somehow I felt it had saved me. What the heck was that? After Agatha and I went our separate ways, I did the shopping for dinner on the way back. It's gonna be hot again to tomorrow, so I have to give them some food that will give them stamina. Enthusiastically, I put the menu together in my head. Oh no, I forgot to buy milk. Because I'm an idiot. There was a convenience store right in front of me. How convenient! But I'm ching. Five years ago, there was a tobacconist here. I didn't realize that was a word. Maybe it isn't. It's a little expensive, but I don't have time to go back to the supermarket. I thought to myself, La la la! Oh my goodness, look who it is. The automatic doors opened, and the one with the self-proclaimed cool allure left the shop. She had a bag on her lap and a smile on her face, which was the exact opposite of cool. She didn't notice me and went back in the direction of the dormitory. So where am I standing exactly if she didn't notice me? It's her, I said aloud for some reason. She didn't go to school, so what is she doing? Oh. I gave up on buying the milk and followed Katori for some reason. Because, you know, being a stalker is more important than food. When she got back to the dormitory, Katori opened the front door just slightly. Hat! Hat! She called Hat from the other side of the door and spoke to him about something. She was sneaking around and seemed really suspicious. First off, if you have harboring in your mind any thoughts about pursuing a woman who talks to a duck and legitimately thinks she gets responses from it, you may want to rethink that. Just, just throwing that out there. Go and see if he's here or not. You know, the guy, that mean boy. I guess she's talking about me. Is she talking about me? This guy is like... Uh, still giving him marks for his perception. This is a girl's dormitory, so I'm only the only boy here. Good job, Sherlock. I don't remember being mean, though. That's because you're special. I don't know why, but it would appear that she is sneaking around to avoid being found by me. If that's how you feel. I headed for the back door through the dormitory. I'll hide in the kitchen for now. Crack! Shh! <laughs> if this is about me, tell her I'm not here. Crack. I doubt that he got the message, but wiggled his butt as he left the dining room and headed for the entrance. While I'm waiting in ambush, I'll put the food I brought in the fridge. After a little while... Looks like he's not here. Alright. When Katori came into the dining hall, she went straight for the cupboard and took out a spoon. Without taking out a dish, she, sta she staged seated in her wheelchair. She put the shopping bag from the convenience store on the table. Inside was... Ten bucks, it's ice cream. Hargandar... Hargan... Hargandarsh? Hargandarsh? 
Needless to say, it was top quality ice cream. Boom, I knew it. Not only that, but it was family size. Oh gosh, the big pot that cost 2,500 yen. And she didn't get out a dish for her ice cream. <laughs> she opened the lid and in her right hand, she had the type of spoon that you would eat things like curry with. I imagine that's a large spoon. <laughs> I'm finally gonna do it. Quack. Katori's spoon was still above the smooth surface of the Hargan Darsh, and she dug a big hole in it. One scoop like that would be about 100 yen, and she stuffed the whole thing in in one mouthful. Oh man. Woo! I'm so happy. <laughs> uh, she brought her hand to her cheek as though she was flooded in happiness from the bottom of her heart. What is she doing? Seeing what she was doing made hiding and watching her seem pretty ridiculous. Without knowing I was watching, Katori began to shovel in more ice cream like a construction machine. This guy's with allergies. I need some improvement. Yum yum, yummy yummy. Even if it was only a 105 yen ice cream, you'd savor the flavor more than that. Yum yum, it's so yummy. The next mouthful of ice cream, Katori suddenly lowered her head, holding her temples because she got a brain freeze because she ate the ice cream too fast. Quack. Uh, I am okay. Just a little brain freeze. To be able to get brain freeze from eating too much hard and darsh is the very height of luxury. For a college student, or a high school student rather, I guess. During this little pleasure, Katori opened up her notebook. There's something written there that I can totally read. I sneak up a little closer behind her, yeah, because apparently I'm wearing, like, moccasins or something. Quack, quack. Shh. Next to the words, eat as much hargan darsh as I want, Katori happily wrote the word done. <laughs> Mission complete. <laughs> If one of this girl's life goals is to eat as much ice cream in one sitting as she wants, maybe she's not so bad. Maybe I was too too quick to judge. It seemed to be some sort of list, like a bucket list. Things I want to do. Boom. There you go. That was the title, and there were bullet points below. Stroke the head of a big dog in the neighborhood. It's really scary, but it might be unexpectedly friendly. If possible, I'd like to ride around on its back. <laughs> Fill the bath with water and swim in it like a pool, pie throwing, and so on. Among those was, go and see Windmill Hill, with Dunn written next to it. What is this? Eek. Whoa! Katori's scream pierced from my right ear and out my left. Well, you're the idiot who decided it would be a good idea to try and, like, startle her, so there. Whoa, 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 what are you, what are you doing here? Why, are, why are you here? I was here before you were. But there's no way. Her mouth was open in shock, and she looked at Hat. Quack. Well, I guess it's no good sending a duck to scout the place out. Even if he was able to completely grasp what his responsibility was, there's no way he could convey the message. Katori seemed ashamed and looked away. Yeah, you jerk, why'd you have to... She just wanted to eat ice cream and you had to be a big jerk and make her feel bad. I'm sorry I surprised you. You were sneaking around, so I wondered what you were doing. I didn't mean to spoil her personal enjoyment, but you did anyway. You really are mean. Wow. I went back to the kitchen to get things ready for dinner. Katori's face seemed to say... Now it only tastes half as good, as she sulkily ate the ice cream. Why are you taking time off school? I caught a cold. Cough, cough. Yeah, that's fake. She's blatantly lying. <laughs> who would someone who has caught a cold be eating ice cream? I think... Yeah, you could eat ice cream whenever the heck you want. I'm the dumb... I'm the dorm mother, you know. I have to make sure the boarding students have the right kind of lifestyle. I don't remember accepting you as a dorm mother. Anyway, isn't it strange for the boy to be a dorm mother? Swoosh. She went to the trouble of turning around so that she could point at me. If you want to call me dorm father, then that's fine by me. Huh. 
Katori turned back around and went back to enjoying her ice cream. If you weren't at school, then where were you? I softened my tone as I, a little as I asked her. It's got nothing to do with you. Did you go back to the Windmill Hill? She's ignoring me and eating her ice cream. It has got something... It has got something to do with me. Wait, what? You said that as a statement, not a question? I won't accept you as the dorm mother. Okay. I don't mean that. Yesterday, if I hadn't been passing by, where would you be right now? Uh... If you're not careful in a place like that, then maybe nobody would have come. If you can't move your wheelchair, what would you have done by yourself, huh? Uh... That's... You still think it's got nothing to do with me? I'm not accusing her of anything. I'm just being really super harsh for no reason. That's why I tried to speak as gently- Oh. <laughs> That's why I tried to speak as gently as possible. So as not to sound too harsh. <laughs> well, I guess I'm... Just totally, like, overriding the way this character's acting. However, I showed how serious I was. Yeah, there you go. Look, I said thank you, didn't I? For me to thank anyone is extremely rare, you know. It's true. It's as rare as a giant salamander. You, you should be the one thanking me. Are you proud of that? If you think that people would be happy because it's so rare, you're severely mistaken. Huh. Katori seemed daunted by this sound argument, put down the spoon, and started thinking seriously. But because I'm like this, I can't do anything. Do you want some ice cream? It's really expensive. No, I don't. I sounded a little mean, so Katori... <laughs> ...became tearful all of a sudden. Her cheeks were quivering as she desperately tried to hold back the tears. Hey, hey, I'm sorry, I was joking. Don't make that face. It's nothing. I'm fine. B -b baka <laughs> That's right, see? You're fine. Quack, quack. Hat quacked as though he was trying to cheer Katori up. I wouldn't tell you to say thank you. I wouldn't tell you to say thank you, would I? It's just that if you're going... If you go outside without telling anyone where you're going, it's kind of dangerous, you know? She wiped the corner of her eye a little with her finger. I understand, but... I don't want to understand. Do I have to understand? Somehow that's what the look on her face said. She put the spoon down and went to leave the dining hall. Where are you going? I'm going to wash my face. It's all sticky around my mouth from where I've been eating ice cream. <laughs> she closed the notebook and put it on her lap. Then a piece of paper fell from the notebook. You dropped something. Katori looked as though she hadn't heard and left the dining hall. Hat went after her. As the sound of the wheelchair grew farther away, I let out a big sigh. Maybe I said too much. It's just that I really was worried about her, but I apparently didn't... Uh, never mind. I don't know anything about what's going on with Katori, so perhaps I was unnecessarily interfering. Wait. <laughs> Walk into this piece of paper. Speaking of which, she was wearing her uniform. However, she was wearing her own clothes yesterday when she went to Windmill Hill. Could it be that she was actually planning on going to school? That's possible, isn't it? As I thought of that, I felt my mood lighten a little, and I picked up the piece of paper she had dropped. Huh? For a moment, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a notice for withdrawal from school. Oh, so she's actually being not expelled, but oh wait, I wonder. Okay, well that's that's actually where I'm gonna stop it for now. Stop this episode. But it was fun, as it always is, and I will see you guys next time.